a really great film. And I've got to confess to everybody, I'm a fan of Speak Productions and everything you've done in the past. So you've got, um, you know, you've been somebody who's already a big cheerleader right there. I love what you guys do. Uh, the easiest and the first question really is the genesis of the project. You said you, you came up with this idea really quick. What was the genesis, and did you really have something really specific you were trying to say, or you just thought it was a great idea? Well, normally making movies takes a really, really long time, and we're always, like, basically you're just waiting constantly, um, and it gets really boring, and so last summer, as we're still waiting for some projects to get off the ground, I was like, let's just do something quick and fast and easy, and I have this sort of seed of an idea that I think could could be like sexy, but also a little bit smart. And so then I wrote it really fast. Tom was very skeptical at first. He was like, I don't really know. This idea sounds a little cliche and a little, a little silly. But I wrote the script, and it was sort of interesting. And so then we just kind of took it from there, like adding in uh, Matthew and his energy and who he was, and then Tanner, and really like making it an organic process of trying to find a story based on the initial concept I had that was interesting is something that we could get done quickly for not a lot of money. So the idea was all about filling time and feeling fulfilled as a creative person and not drained by the waiting process of a creative person. I think anybody who's a filmmaker in the audience can absolutely identify with that. I know I do. Um, you know, obviously you succeeded uh, without a doubt in the titillation process and everything that everybody expects with the title and the subject matter, but I don't know if uh, the audience really um, was ready for what you brought in terms of humanizing, you know, and going beyond objectification, making it really funny and warm in real people's stories. And, you know, was that your, uh, was this your intention to really get deep and smart and like that, and or was part of that just part of the process in the subjects that you're working with, you know, with Matt, with everybody, did they, how much of that did they bring into all of it? It was both. I hoped that we could make, I hoped, and I still hope that people find that it is something that is sexy but has depth, and that's what I hoped that it would be, and, and um, I still hope it would be. And I, I think that um, with the process that we sort of created and the people that we found, we were able to arrive at something that that I think comes close to what, what I hoped it would be. That's good. So, Tom, the skeptic at first, what, at what point were you totally one of um, I, I mean, it's the cool. first edit. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> because this movie, I mean, literally, it was Corey and I, like, schlepping everything around. And we had just come off a film called Mariachi Gringo that he and I did. That we shot in Mexico, which was a much, I mean, it was a $2 million movie, and we had a big crew. And something, the thought of going around hot New York, carrying a bunch of shit, just did not sound fun to me. <laughs> but Matthew, you know, Corey went and met Matthew, and then when we got Tanner involved, I mean, Tanner was in More the World Mine. He was, uh, he's so incredible um, as an actor and as a person. Um, you know, when he came on board, it, it, it suddenly was a very uh, different journey than we took. Um, but it took me a while. <laughs> and Matthew, what about you? Uh, just in terms of getting involved, did you, uh, you know, what was your thought process getting involved and how did you sort of uh, evolve through the process? I mean, did you see it? Is something that has much of sort of depth and pathos as it does, or, or are you even surprised by how it, how it turned out? I'm definitely surprised by how it turned out. I think that um, originally... The, and I mean I, that the best possible way. No, <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, I have no acting experience in um, doing something like this, especially with, like speaking and like memorizing lines <laughs> and stuff like that. It's, it was definitely a challenge, and I wasn't expecting it to... Like the second time watching it, I think it was tonight. Maybe. It, but actually, I enjoyed it, and I got to see it from an outside perspective, not so like, self-consciously. Um, and I thought it was good. I liked it. And so, <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It, and, and it definitely doesn't seem like you've not had any acting experience, because it was really natural. It was really lovely performance, and, you know, it, that, that is a team effort. And so, um, how has, uh, you know, as you gotten this project out there, how has this experience been different or unexpected for you? I mean, you have had other films out, you've had a big success, uh, you know, uh, how has this differed and what's been sort of the biggest surprise and the biggest, um, like, the most joyous surprise, maybe? 
I think the most exciting thing is to be back on the Gay and Lesbian Festival circuit. I mean, With the World Mind was such a special film for us, and um, you know, we had a short film in there after With the World Mind, but to be back on the circuit and to be um, embraced in a way at festivals that it is such a special community. It's it's so. I mean, even New Fest, like and Out Fest, it's it's such a great thing that we have here with Gay and Lesbian Festivals, and um, we miss that. You know, so it's, it's that's what I I am so excited about. Yeah, because when you enter, like we, it is important to 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 continue to understand how difficult it is to get a movie seen, and it's getting more difficult. I think it's a lot more difficult than most people in the audience probably realize now. I mean, ninety percent of the movies at Sundance still don't have a distributor. You know, it's it's getting way 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 harder than it ever has been, but yet. The Gay and Lesbian Film Festival circuit still allows for people to come together in a room in the dark and watch a movie together, which is, is becoming something way too unique these days. So to me, just being back in a festival with a film is the most important thing, because um, way too many movies get lost to VOD and to cable, even if, if they even get that far. You know, a lot of movies aren't even getting, you know, half the distribution that they got five years ago. So. So it's very important to celebrate when, when we do come together and share stories. How's the process been? I mean, going to festivals and, and being a part of this side of it, how's that been for you, Matthew? Is it what you expected? Uh, no, it definitely, definitely changes from every place that we go to. Um, it's been fun and very exciting like, everywhere that we go. Japan was really fun, LA was great, and New York is also an amazing place to go. But every experience is very different. Everywhere we've gone, though, the, the reception has been good, so I'm satisfied with that. So, uh, I, for one, um, I know you came up in the preface. Uh, this was you know, really run and done, and you didn't do it with much, but you guys really turned out something beautiful. I, mean, I think the imagery is beautiful, the action is beautiful, it's well set up, it's well thought out. I mean, the craftsmanship in the film it, it is there. Um, is there... Uh, what I want to ask with that, and I definitely want to make sure we have time for the audience to say things. Is there uh, something, as you're, as you're looking at this and you're crafting it, and you're, you're, you mentioned that it's sort of a team-oriented thing, that, that, uh, that everybody sort of you know, brought a little bit of their character, um, this sort of depth of, the, of looking at objectification and of our online life, and uh, you know, how we, as popular culture and a gay culture, you know, sort of interact and have this online life. Was that, the depth to which you took that, was that something that was always intended or, you know, or is this just sort of a, a byproduct of really weaving something something together? The only real theme I started with was, was that, like, the idea of getting yourself out of your apartment or out of your house and out from behind your computer and experiencing life for real. You know, for better or for worse, if you like characters and you don't, you like the story you don't, I hope it Right. The message is, you know, stop living on Facebook, you know, because the world is, I mean, it's nice, at least for 23 hours, it's nice to connect, it's nice to connect to people in the way, it's nice to have that as a tool for connection, but the world is not Facebook, and Facebook is not the world, and that, to me, was the, one of the biggest inspirations, and when I started meeting Andy Warhol's work into it, it just was like a perfect mesh, because he was like, I mean, if, if there were a Facebook, he would be the king of Facebook, but in a way, he was also, he was like epitomizing what, fa what Facebook is, exists for while fighting against it and everything he did. It was like objectifying people, but doing it in a way that empowered them, which Facebook does not do, it doesn't empower us. It makes us slaves to everybody else in our lives. And so that was the only theme that I started with hoping to explore was that idea of removing yourself from social media, not so literally, but removing yourself from your apartment and from what confines you and stepping into the world and experiencing it. And actually, it got Corey and I out of the house, which is kind of great. <laughs> like we, we got to go to Splash before it closed, which I, you know, we spent many nights at Splash. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is great. I mean, one of my favorite favorite segments of the film, shooting it and in the final product, is the kiss sequence. And because we got to travel all around mm -hmm. the city, and there's many more shots that didn't make the movie, but. It's great to, to make a film in New York with New York as such a big character.
it, not gratuitously, you know, that's what I love. It was really an intimate, you know, it is these people's intimate experience of New York. And it's not just simply a backdrop, which I really appreciated. Um, it is late, so I want to make sure we get questions in before we go too far. Right there in the middle, gentlemen. Hi. Yes. Oh, um, um, this is the second time I've seen it, and it is so rich, and there's so much to see and to, and you can't catch everything, and I want to compliment you on that. But Corey, when you wrote this, did you have Tanner in mind? Were you aware of Matthew? Uh, because it's hard to imagine that, that many actors, or go-go boys, so to speak, who would have the stuff to uh, have the spontaneity and intimacy that is in this film. And, and did you actually write this without them in mind? <laughs> Uh, I did not have Tanner in mind. <clears throat> um, I know he's, if, if you don't know, Tanner's like a New York Times bestseller, and he's like super busy and has like a movie deal and all this stuff, but I didn't think he would be interested or <laughs> want to be involved. Um, and we did not approach him. He actually approached us once he heard that we were doing it. Um, I just wrote it. Actually, what you see, I should say first, what you see in the film is probably maybe like 35-40% of it was scripted, what's actually in the finished film, so the outline slash script that I wrote had the big ideas, but it didn't have a lot of the specifics of who they were. I mean, as I, as I was writing it, um, I was researching online, Googling, like finding like who would this New York nightlife personality be, and as the story was forming, I came across Matthew's sort of online persona um, his website and Facebook and everything, and I was like, this seems like the person because I want somebody who is not just a nightlife personality, not just a go-go dancer, but somebody who has like another side to their life because obviously it would be boring to do this with somebody who had no depth as a person. So he, his sort of personality sort of became infused with what I was writing, and I met him when I was probably after maybe the first draft of the script, so there were a lot of there was a lot of writing done after I met him to like lead what we were going to shoot in the direction that would um, in the direction of who he is and what his life is as far as the sort of documentary stuff that we shot. So it was kind of fluid and we were lucky to not be worried about like a deadline or a budget or like when it has to be finished and we were lucky to just be able to embark on putting it all together in a way that had that involved no pressure, other than the pressure we put on ourselves. So, so it was all kind of came together. At you the same met, time. I mean, you met Matthew early, early on in the process. I think we met in July, maybe. I don't remember. It was, <laughs> I, don't, I remember it was really hot outside. And After months of obsessing. And then uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had the idea in June. I think we met in July, and we started shooting in September. So it was all fast. But with Tanner, we actually reached out. To, Tanner was in Where the World Mind. He's the star of Where the World Mind. And we reached out to him to get suggestions, because we were like, we're looking for kind of a young filmmaker. And he's the one who said, well, why aren't you considering me? And Corey and I had the moment of like, it was weird, because we didn't know what this journey was going to be. Um, but then it, it, putting, getting Tanner involved was one of the best decisions we made because it was already a, a trust there. There was, you know, it, he's an incredible actor and collaborator, so he was a huge part of this. Uh, yes, sir, in the blue. Um, did you ever consider having go fuck Doc? Because I think you really needed it. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> That's in the extras. You gotta buy the DVD. Yeah. <laughs> I know that didn't cross my mind. It was always. Wait, I mean, I, I planned that out from the beginning. But that's how that scene would go. So I don't know. That, no. There was something. Uh, yes. Now, um, the authenticity, without judgment, of sort of the contemporary gay queer culture is so overwhelmingly wonderful. But in the editing process, how did you walk the line between porno tease and reality? Well, um, some of, 
Uh, it, I will try to do the question justice. Um, uh, but really, it, you know, the basic of it is how do you how do you walk that line between the more titillating part of it, the porno tease, and the reality of it, and, and, and the reality of these situations. I mean, it's very basic. Like I wrote, I wrote like a five-page scene that I knew would be really boring in the movie that had a whole bunch of ideas that were bouncing around in my head and I tried to give it like a sense of conflict by pitting one against the other and developing each of their ideas separately and then and then I told them we were shooting it I was like you're gonna have to be in bed and be naked because it'll be boring if you're not nobody will want to watch this and then we shot it and Matthew didn't always remember his lines so a lot of what he says he kind of made up which was fine so the end, <laughs> the, uh, so what we ended up with was you know me figuring out where how to place these scenes throughout the film in a way that would would not diminish the, diminish the audience's attention but still maintain the core idea of what this conversation is between and it's not just a conversation for like the queer audience we were in we screened in Japan like they really connected to this idea in a larger in a larger way for their culture the idea of how do you retain what is unique about you while contributing to the rest of the world? And as the world grows smaller and more connected, I think it's an important conversation for everyone to have. So the idea was just to make that conversation prominent, but to keep it interesting enough that you might not listen to it and watch it and hear what they have to say. Yes, there you go. Matthew was such a convincing dancer. Have you had any experience with that before? Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I had Gogo dance done previously for a number of years before actually filming that. I think I had actually stopped dancing at that time when we were filming the movie um, to move on to other projects. What was filming at Splash like? It's great. I actually used to work there too, and right up until we started filming. I think a little bit afterwards as well. Um, it was fun. They were fun. They were kind of just, Mark Nelson just kind of gave his carte launch on his night, which was Friday nights, and said, come do whatever you want to do. And we were totally under the radar, like our camera was so small that half the people didn't really notice we were there. And it was kind of, we just kind of tried to get through the list of shots we had to do. I think we were there for two, two different, on two different nights. Seems like you had a lot for such a short period of time. Uh, yes, so right in the middle. Um, yeah, I was very glad to hear you say about the whole thing about, uh, uh, I was talking, one of the most poignant things was when uh, uh, Joe asked Doc what was the last time you were saying. And, and when he said that, you know, like, uh, my digital, you know, uh, sex life was fine for me. And I was sort of struck with the fact that here's a kid is like young, you know, early 20s, and that's what he's really, really doing. And, um, you know, because I've sort of coined the term that we are back in the digital closet. And, um, uh, and so it was very good to hear that, you know, that that was sort of a very, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, pinnacle thing. It's way too easy to not talk to people anymore. It's true. Not to interact with people for real anymore. I was wondering about your decision. There was, was so much nudity in it. I'm wondering about the decision not to show penises. Why was that decision made? Uh, I mean, <laughs> well, mine in there very briefly. Is it? I think there's there's maybe like a half a frame. Maybe like a half a frame. I mean, they didn't want to show their penises, and I, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a make or break deal. I, I didn't. I think it's way sexier the way we have it. I mean, I yeah. like, yeah. also didn't want, I didn't want the, the sex scene to be, to feel like a, uh, impressionistic, like poetic sex scene where you like just see an arm and a leg and it takes like 15 seconds. Like I wanted to feel like, and the iPhone footage was key to that, to making it feel like it was actually happening um, in that period of time. I don't think anybody would, I mean, if you just watch the iPhone, when we got home that night and I put the headphones in and it was laying in bed looking at the iPhone, I was like, I'm not really sure if they actually did it or not. They might have actually done something more than what I've seen. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, yeah, it was a lot more emotionally intense. He was very demure. What do you mean? <laughs> he was, he was shy. I'm, yeah, I'm more shy than I thought you would. 
I'm actually a pretty shy person, and to a lot of the stuff that um, they interviewed me about, some some of that actually is stuff that's actually happened to me and it's part of my actual life. So having that sort of transparently on the screen is very uh, it, it exposes a lot about yourself. So that that's probably I'm more like shy about that than the actual sex scene or anything like that. So I mean, it was very pleasant to work with Tanner. He's a great guy and. Um, we had a great chemistry, so that, none of that stuff was awkward. More about the talking about yourself and opening up is definitely way more awkward. <laughs>